So as if NVIDIA wasn't in enough hot water already, I mean the GeForce Partner Program, where they're enforcing AMD gaming cards out of the market from companies that have both NVIDIA and AMD under the same label, like ROG Strix or MSI Gaming, to the fact that it's been found out that they're nerfing some MX150s in some Ultra books by cutting down the processing up to 20% in some instances. And now we have a video from Actually Hardcore Overclocking from Buildzoid over on that channel, reference G NVIDIA GTX 780, 780Ti's, Titan X Maxwell's, 980Ti's are burning out their memory inductors a lot. Probably see that this is not a happy little inductor. Um, it seems to have puked out most of its guts in this direction, um, as well as onto its body right here. He was looking at images from GTX 780s, 980s, 1080s, or not 1080s, Titans, and all of these various cards, pictures that were either on Reddit or sent to him in Discord or he found online, where memory inductors on these PCBs, reference PCB models from NVIDIA, the memory inductors are basically blowing up. For the memory um, of a GTX 780 or a GTX Titan or a GTX uh, 980 Ti or a GTX Titan XM or a 780 Ti or a GTX Titan Black Edition or a GTX 780 with a custom air cooler, but still this PCB because a lot of the like the, like MSI's gaming. Uh, 780 uses this PCB. There, there's a lot of 780s out there running this PCB. Now there's a lot of information that's missing as to why this may be particularly happening, but from what Buildzoid speculates in his video, which you should absolutely check out because he goes into a full technical analysis, complete breakdown, he explains why, how, what things are rated for, what type of amps they're supposed to be producing, what, what the actual inductors are doing. They're basically preventing the full voltage to going to the memory. So basically these memory inductors are acting as a barrier between the voltage that's coming in, which is 12 volts, and then the memory itself, and then it's supposed to be quite a bit lower. However, it appears that Nvidia has skimped out on these products quite a bit. One memory inductor too many for this to not be some kind of major oversight from NVIDIA's side. Based on his research of looking at what type of memory inductors are available and based on the size of memory inductor that is there, they really aren't rated for the type of amperage that they're actually having pulled through it, pushed through it. And that, in short, is basically resulting in these memory inductors actually popping and bricking the cards for, for the time being. And so Buildzoid has a picture of basically five or six different cards that he's looked at, but then also speculates to the fact that there may be many, many, many more of these cards that are out there that just sh simply get sent back in for RMA because people aren't opening up their cards to see what popped or to see what issues are when their card dies. And so these images are very few and far between because there's not enough people who are taking pictures of their actual PCB. And it turns out with certain PCBs from these various cards that are there, there's actually size to put a bigger memory inductor that will allow more amperage to go through. And basically this is speculated that this is a cost cutting measure by Nvidia to save money when they're building the PCBs of these cards, not putting high enough rated memory inductors on these PCBs. And certainly in the case of a Titan X Maxwell, it's not high enough for the memory that's, uh, that's being put on the chip and so these things are popping because Nvidia cut corners saved money and now is having cards just you know stop working but fortunately Buildzoid says that this is a completely solvable solution actually replacing the inductor that's there with a bit of soldering can make it as good as new mostly uh, you, you, you can get the card working again if you're able to replace the memory inductor if you have the soldering skills and the ability to actually do that yourself but then it's not really advised because who knows what else is gonna happen to the card once you start doing that. Anyways, I wanted to bring attention to this. I wanna have a little discussion after this, but I do wanna give a big pitch for Buildzoid because obviously he's the one who's been looking into this. He's the one who, who's breaking the story on this and you should definitely check out his video. You should, um, he's, he's asking for reference cards that may have blown up in this similar fashion to be sent to him so that he can do more research so that he can actually look into all of the 
all of the memory inductor issues that are going on. So if you have a card, 780, 780 Ti, 980 Ti, Titan X, anything that it looks like the memory inductor is blowing, you should certainly go to his channel, find out where he receives dead units and ship it on over to him so that he can actually do more research on this. So we can see whether or not this is the case that Nvidia has been skimping on memory inductors for this. And then also one last little plug, he's also trying to raise money for Computex, which is something that I definitely am going to this year. Shout out to Wootwear, thank you guys for sending me. Uh, so I'll be at Computex. He's trying to raise money for Computex. I would absolutely recommend that you you help him get there because he's definitely one of the uh, really, really good tech YouTubers who's just doing tons of in-depth technical content, but doesn't do it regularly in a way that you know brings in tons of money. So go, go over to his channel, show some love, show some support, um, and let's try to get him to Computex, but then also let's try to get him a bunch of dead, dead cards that could hopefully uh, you know break more of this story wide open and that we could find more information out about all of this. So that's my little plug for Buildzoid, actually hardcore overclocking. Again, links in the description, top right hand corner, all of that good stuff. But then also this will be discussion time now that we've given Buildzoid full credit for everything and absolutely go on and check out his stuff. I want to make this video so that we can get some more uh, sample data from all of my audience and whoever might be watching this video. It, if you have these cards, have you seen these issues? Have you had these issues with any of the, the cards mentioned? 780, 780 Ti's, 980 Ti's, Titan X. Maxwell's or any of the other cards. And if you have, if you've seen these, are they happening on your reference models or are they happening on other models as well? Do you have EVGAs, ASUS, MSIs, any one of those? Are you seeing these types of memory inductor burnouts happening on those specific cards as well? I would like to know that. And especially if you're mining, if you've been mining with any of these cards, especially if you're doing it with a reference model, because that's what Buildzoid's video tends to indicate, is that the reference models are the ones that are struggling here. If you have been mining with those, are you seeing a higher rate of of burnout on these specific cards versus other cards that are in the rotation of your mining rigs or in the rotation of your mining farms, whatever it may be that you have. Are you seeing 980 Ti's burn out much quicker than 1070's and 1080's or even more, more frequently than 970's for anybody who might be having those cards? Because I'm sure that out of my audience, you guys have tons of experience with mining with a whole bunch of, a bunch of cards and that pushing the memory specifically seems to be the issue here since it's the memory inductor and pushing the voltage straight through, apparently is burning it out because it's not regulated, it's not rated for the type of amps that are going through. And so if, if that's the case, then overclocking the memory and putting more strain on the memory for a, you know, cryptocurrencies like Ethereum where that's mostly important. And so you're overclocking the memory speed to get higher frequencies, to get higher hash rate. Are you seeing more frequent burnout on those cards? What What is your rate of percentage and all of that? I would I would love to have this information put down in the comments for, for my sake, also for Buildzoid's sake. If he sees this video, hopefully we can get him some sample data, what's going on there. And I'm sure that there's plenty of people watching this video going, of course, this is what AMD did. Of course, they skimped on money. They, caught, they cut costs even when they didn't have to because it's not going to cost them a whole heck of a lot more to get actual, uh, you know, better memory inductors into these cards, especially when they had the space for them. It's not a space restriction, as as Buildzoid po pointed out. Like they could fit basically a six by six millimeter inductor there, and they'd be perfectly fine. But instead, or a five by five, but they basically put in a four by four, and causing these issues because it's hard to get at that size the type of rating that you would need for the memory inductor on a Titan X Maxwell. But again, I'm making this video for general awareness as well as pointing to Buildzoid. If you guys wanna check out the very in-depth technical uh, side of everything that he he basically breaks down, absolutely does a great job. He also does PCB breakdowns over on Gamers Nexus. You can check out his videos there. Like I just, he's very, very smart. Very, very good stuff. That, that's what I have to say there. And then yes, uh, Closing, that's going to be it. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this. Smash it three times if you're upset with NVIDIA because if you smash it once, then it's like, and then if you do it twice, then it's a dis unlike, and then if you do it three times, then it's a like again. So do it three times if you're upset with NVIDIA. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm in Tennessee right now. New hotel, gonna be a different hotel tomorrow night as well. So just kind of bear with me as I continue to travel throughout the United States, bringing you all of the videos that I possibly can uh, to hopefully keep you guys informed of what's going on in the tech community, because this is what I do when I'm on the road. I'm basically watching and listening to a whole bunch of tech that's going on. This is all I can do while I'm driving. Like I can't, I can't, you know, make videos while I'm driving. I can't edit, I can't do anything else. So I'm listening and I'm consuming a whole bunch of content. So the easiest types of videos 
videos for me to make and I think the most helpful will be kind of just bringing you guys information that's happening elsewhere and breaking it down for you in a way that's hopefully a bit more relatable, a bit more cheery, a bit more fun. That's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Anyways, yes, that's going to be it. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers. Why did I snap? That was... Okay. Oh, jeez. Ah, where's that echo? Do you hear it? Ah! Do you hear that? The, uh, what is that? Is it the air conditioner?